Okay, full disclosure, I'm hanging like a giraffe's happy sack today, so this review may lack some of my usual pep. But musters up bags of enthusiasm, hey look, it's one of those phones what bends, way! On paper at least, Samsung's Galaxy Z Flip 4 isn't a massive upgrade over last year's Flip 3. But this bendy bugger does boast a bigger battery, tougher design, a faster chipset and some dandy wee camera upgrades to boot. And yeah, it does start from a cool grand, so it won't be most people's first choice in a cost of living crisis with the economy right in the toilet, but it does at least come with some respectable money off options when you trade in any other working blower. And if you've got the cash to spare, well, I've been using the Galaxy Z Flip 4 as my full-time smartphone for over a week now, so here's my in-depth review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now, if you want yourself a compact smartphone, it doesn't get much more miniature than this. The Flip 4 is absolutely teeny when it's folded up, matched only by Motorola's Razer Reboot. Of course, once you prise it open, suddenly you've got yourself a beastly 6.7 inch display to contend with. So it is just as well that Samsung's usual one-handed mode is here when needed. Now one thing to definitely point out is that the hinge action here on the Z Flip 4 is rather stiff. That's a deliberate choice and it's good for propping up the Z Flip at any angle for Skyping, shooting video, stuff like that. It'll hold firm, no worries. But it does unfortunately mean that coolly flipping open this phone with just a single mitt is pretty much impossible. You'll certainly need quite a muscular thumb, just kind of get it in that groove and then... Uh, you certainly don't get that satisfying feeling you got from the old flip phones from back in the day where you'd whip them out and just like... Whoosh, whoosh. And no worries if you fumble it because the Z Flip 4 is a durable Wii Morpho. Samsung has slapped on its tougher armour aluminium frame while you've also got a bit of Gorilla Glass Victus Plus caught in the front and back ends. And so far, all good, even after a fair bit of abuse and a couple of accidental drops onto hard flooring, no scratches or dents on that metal edge in all the glass back. You've also got a pre-installed screen protector which Samsung recommends not tampering with, and apparently that hinge action can withstand around 200,000 folds and unfolds, so you don't need to worry about it falling to bits before you do an upgrade. And the Z Flip 4 is also IPX8 water resistant, so no worries if you're enjoying a soapy anime marathon in the bath and you happen to drop it in the water, it'll all be fine. And before you say anything, yes, sitting in a bath watching back-to-back -back shonen until the water turns cold enough to shrivel your skin is a perfectly natural thing for a 40-year-old man to be doing. The actual aesthetics haven't really changed up at all for this 4th gen model, and that's fine because the Z Flip 4 is as cute as it is compact. As well as this Bora purple model, you can also grab the phone in graphite, pink gold and blue. Otherwise, if you fancy completely emptying your wallet, you can go onto Samsung's website and order yourself what they call a bespoke edition, where you can actually customise the design. Overall, I'm liking the design of the Z Flip 4, but I am having some issues with the software. What you have here is Android 12 with that One UI 4 launcher squatting over it, and Samsungifying the look and feel. And generally this works absolutely fine, behaves itself, but just occasionally, even one month on, the Z Flip 4 will suddenly start acting like it's had one too many Bacardi breezes. For example, I haven't been able to set up the Do Not Disturb as I can't even get into that menu. The Z Flip 4 just straight up nopes it right back to the main settings menu every time. I've also tried countless times to add my own photo to the cover screen and I get slapped down every single time. On the flip side though, Samsung's One UI launcher does add quite a lot of bonus bits to Android which are worth having. Device Care helps you to sort out any issues with your bendy blower, while Samsung's Knox Security Suite helps to safeguard all of your sensitive shenanigans. Speaking of which, the edge-mounted fingerprint sensor does an admirable job, even though it's stuck a little high up that right edge when the phone is in big boy mode. Alternatively, just pull up at the Z Flip 4 and the internal camera will scan your face to unlock the phone. And this usually works fine, but it can be a little bit bulky, especially when the lighting isn't quite right. Storage, and you've got yourself options of 128, 256 or 512 gigabytes with the Z Flip 4, though that latter option is only available via Samsung.com, and none of these models are expandable via microSD. You also have just a single SIM slot, but the Flip does at least support eSIM. That 1.9 inch Super AMOLED cover display is the same size and same tech as last year's Flip 3. It is perfectly sharp at 302 pixels per inch, and it's big enough to comfortably use the variety of widgets, including the media controls, a brief schedule update and notifications, all of which can be swapped around and replaced if you like. It's really good if you're listening to some music, you just want to skip a track that you don't like, or you want to check your notifications, maybe send a quick one-word reply. It means you can avoid awkwardly flipping open the smartphone unless you need to do something more substantial. 
Like the main screen's always on display, that cover panel can be personalised with different clock types, themes, those bloody AR emojis, and even your own pixel videos up to 15 seconds. Or at least they could if that bit actually bloody worked for me. And for this year's phone, there's also no upgrades for the bendy screen that is tucked away inside. It's another 6.7 inch dynamic AMOLED stunner that is ideal for relaxing with cinematic fare thanks to that stretched aspect ratio. It's a full HD plus panel with HDR10 plus support, so photos and video look sharp and contrast is strong, while you've also got full control over the colours. By default they're quite poppy and vibrant, but you can dial it down a bit if you're not a fan of warmer tones. And yeah, the refresh maxes out at 120Hz, so everything is super smooth. One of my only complaints is that central crease, which is painfully obvious even when you're not tilting the phone at an angle, and every time you run your finger over it, it really doesn't feel pleasant. And that pre-installed screen protector is a serious magnet for dust, lint, grime, whatever happens to be floating around, so I'm constantly having to wipe this thing off of my jeans. The Z Flip 4 stereo speakers are pretty good for watching shows, even when you're in quite a noisy environment, while the Bluetooth 5.2 streaming is impeccable for getting your tunes straight in your locals without any of those pesky cables. And if you did want to use cables, well, you'll have to use a dongle basically because there's no headphone jack here. As for the performance, well, that comes courtesy of Qualcomm's latest, freshest Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1. Same as a lot of recent Android flagships, and that's backed here on the Z Flip 4 by 8 gigabytes of RAM, so every day running is as slick as a 70s hairdo. I've got to say, I am impressed and a little surprised at just how good the gaming experience is on Samsung's bendy blower. Genshin Impact plays wonderfully on higher graphics with no obvious heat buildup over time, so the frame rate stays stable even when it all kicks off and you've got all this shit flying at your face. And likewise, the Z Flip 4 is great for competitive online gaming. I've still got my bollocks blown off on Call of Duty over and over and over, but that crisp widescreen display means you get a clear view of the action and it's tougher for enemy scum to flank you. The screen is responsive enough to keep you competitive and again the performance is top notch. And yeah, Samsung's gaming mode is here as usual, allowing you to disable auto brightness, boost the performance, etc. It's pretty decent, although not quite as comprehensive as the gaming mode you'll find on a lot of rivals like ColorOS, MIUI, etc. Now another big upgrade for the Flip 4 over the previous generation is the battery size, which has been kicked right up from 3,300mAh to 3,700. But does that mean that the Z Flip 4 has great battery life? Well, no, not really. It's okay, you'll generally enjoy just over 5 hours of screen on time, sometimes stretching up to around 6 hours depending on what you're actually up to. But as soon as you start doing anything more intensive like using the cameras for instance, you'll notice the battery drain happens pretty fast. A couple of times during this past week I've had to plug in a portable power pack before the end of the day just to give it a quick juice up. And even if you do make it to the end of the day without having to do that, you'll find you generally are left with absolute dregs. On top of that, the 25 watt wired charging isn't particularly nippy, although at least you do get wireless charging support. Now the camera tech here on the Z Flip 4 isn't Samsung's strongest by any means, but it will suit most people for everyday photography. And that 12 megapixel primary sensor has built in optical image stabilisation, and while it is lagging behind many rivals on that megapixel count, you'll still find you get crisp detailed shots. Many rivals use pixel binnings, you end up with a photo around 12 megs anyway. Colours are often a little warmer and bolder than what you'll see in real life, but that's standard Samsung and it often makes for a more visually appealing snap. HDR situations are handled comfortably with only mild saturation at times. However, indoor shots with more ambient light can pose a problem as sometimes the focus can be a wee bit lethargic and any motion often results in blur. But with a little bit of care and a compliant subject, you will be alright. A 12 meg ultra wide angle shooter is a good one. There's not much compromise when it comes to visual fidelity, colour reproduction isn't too different compared with the main camera, and it's certainly a godsend if you want to fit more into the frame. Just bear in mind there's no telephoto lens here, and if you digitally zoom using the primary sensor, you will get quite grainy results even outdoors in good light. As usual with Samsung smartphones, you get tons of bonus camera mods chucked in there as well. All the usual Sammy fare, including the single take mode, which is very good if you've got kids, cats, anything that moves around and occasionally does funny sh**. There's no 8K video shooting on here, unlike the S-series phones, but it does support 4K capture at 30 or 60 frames per second, and it does a bang-up job as usual. Audio is clearly picked up from all directions, and the visuals are crisp, unless the lighting is again quite cack. And when you unfurl the Flip 4, you've got a 10 megapixel selfie shooter, which sadly isn't hidden beneath the display, unlike on the Fold. 
And this is fine for outdoor selfies and when the lighting is good, but as soon as you move into softer light, things do get quite soft and the colors peel away. And yes, any kind of motion is most definitely not a good thing. And using the selfie cam tucked away on that massive 6.7 inch internal display, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage of yourself. And of course you can prop the phone up on a flat surface and do it all hands free if you want to do a bit of your TikToks, bit of all of that. And there you have it, my lovelies. There's my full final frank review of the Galaxy Z Flip 4 from Samsung. Not a cheap blower, but quite a cute little compact bendy blower. There are a few hardware and software issues, but if you're sold on the compact design and the wow factor, it is definitely a very enjoyable everyday handset. That's what I think anyway. It'd be great to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and dig that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.